Welcome to the Melbourne Jail, Melbourne, Australia, Crime and Justice Experience, the entrance, the old Melbourne Jail. So we're going to continue this series of explorations into former prisons that have been repurposed as museums. And this simple sign planted on the footpath in Melbourne is actually conveying a lot more information than you might realize. As I write at length in the book that these lectures are based on, Escape to Prison, Penal Tourism, and the Pull of Punishment. These are story-telling institutions. Story-telling institutions. There's a great deal of performance. And oftentimes that performance is very subtle. And these subtle performances also rely on a range of semiotic techniques. Let's unpack this sign before we enter the Melbourne Jail. What we see here is an illustration, and I'm not going to interpret this for you because I am engaging in a performance technique known as foreshadowing. That is, I'm giving you a little bit of information ahead of time that will be fully explained much later. Very common technique in storytelling. Foreshadowing. There are also, in this, the, the bottom panel here, best heritage cultural tourism attraction in Australia. Now this is a not so subtle jab at the, sit, the city of Sydney, in my view. I was a visiting professor at the University of Sydney in Faculty of Law and Criminology and had the great uh, pleasure and opportunity to spend time in Melbourne as well. And what outsiders should realize is there's enormous rivalry between these two cities, even today, especially today, Melbourne and Sydney. So when I read this panel, best heritage and cultural tourism attraction in Australia, and then they switch the color code to red, what they are trying to convey is that they are very much on top, and that Sydney and other capital cities take a back seat. Storytelling institutions, let's move on. And here we are, the exterior of the Melbourne Jail, surrounded by modern architecture. This institution was built in the 1840s. It was built with, with a, 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 a larger model of influence from Pentonville, the major penal institution in London. Some of you who have seen earlier episodes of this series where we go to Eastern State Penitentiary in Philadelphia will also find a great deal of similarity between these institutions. But oftentimes visitors will gaze at the exterior of the institution before they enter. This is a phenomenological phenomenon which is absorption. And that is taking in the architecture, gazing, internalizing, realizing that this is a historic institution, that this is a, an important site. And we're going to talk at length about sightedness, where things actually occurred. So let's move on. It's amazing architecture. It's important to point out that it's easy to get caught up in the immediate 
appreciation of architecture of prisons, while simultaneously neglecting the larger purpose of these institutions, which was to inflict pain and punishment. So they've been repurposed not only for purposes of converting this institution into a museum, but in doing so, they actually repurpose the visit. Because if you were a prisoner brought to this institution in the 1880s, you would not necessarily have it not necessarily have the same appreciation of this architecture with a sense of a sense of intrigue. You'd be worried about your own fate. This is a lantern ceiling and this is providing natural light. It's very impressive. These are the tiers and let's magnify this, this depth of range and we're foreshadowing. We're going to see these items that are stacked up on these tiers, these exhibits. This is part of the storytelling institution. Got a set of stories at the bottom that we'll visit. We'll make our way up the staircase to the second tier. More stories, more foreshadowing. Then we make our way up to the top tier while simultaneously appreciating the architecture that has been preserved. The Melbourne Jail, the best heritage site in Australia, according to these curators. And here we have an opportunity to gaze, internalize, the octagonal shape. Prisons in Australia and America and England especially were built at a time in the 1820s, 30s and beyond with enormous governmental support and enthusiasm. It was a time when prison architecture was becoming recognized as a legitimate subset and offshoot of the field of architecture. It was taken very seriously by a unique group of architects who were specializing in prisons, prison architecture, and they had enormous funds available to them. So as you can see of this octagonal shape, this geometric outline that provides a greater interior. It would be so easy to start cutting corners and just build a staircase over there so people can walk up and cross the, 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 the tier. It would be so easy to do that. But these architects were becoming absorbed in their own plans and absorption. And I mention that because oftentimes when we go into these institutions, those semiotic messages about architecture are delivered without narration. There is an inner appreciation of geometric shapes. I can elaborate on that. Here. Prison museums frequently provide a model of the institution that replicates what it looked like from an aerial perspective during the days when it was fully operating as a penal institution. And the Melbourne Jail is no exception. Let me hone in on this particular geometric shape. I find this interesting because if you've listened to some of my other lectures, panopticism figures prominently 
in the geometric shape of prisons, especially with respect to the cylinder, the round geometric shape that provides the, the direction of surveillance. And the prison, and here I'm borrowing from one of my influences, Michel Foucault, the prison can be understood as an early laboratory for the development and the diffusion of surveillance studies. The prison was a laboratory that benefited from being able to place inmates, subjects, under tight control. And in experiments in laboratories, control is paramount. You don't want a lot of external forces or factors interfering with the experiment. I'm going to take a pause, but let me repeat. By way of Michel Foucault, the prison was a laboratory for the development and the diffusion of surveillance studies. And when we return, we are going to explain in detail with theoretical insight, what this particular design conveys.